Good afternoon and welcome. I'm opening this joint meeting of the Hood River County, Multnomah County and Clackamas County Boards of Commissions. This Zoom meeting is the time and place designated by the Secretary of State for filing, filling the vacancy of House District 52. I am Clackamas County Chair Tootie Smith and I will chair this meeting. I'd like to start us out by calling for the Pledge of Allegiance and I will lead. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, we have commissioners present from all three counties, but I will ask uh, Clackamas County Clerk, Shannon Bays, if you would please take the roll. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Hood River County Chair, Mike Oates. Here. Hood River County Commissioner, Arthur Babbins. Here. Hood River County Commissioner, Bob Benton. Here until 4.30. Thank you. Hood River County Commissioner, Karen Joplin. Here. Hood River County Commissioner, Les Perkins. Here. Multnomah County Chair, Deborah, Deborah Caffery. Did I say that right? Close enough. <laughs> it's uh, Kafori here. Kafori, thank you. Multnomah County Commissioner Sharon Myron. Here. Multnomah County Commissioner Lori Stegman. Here. Multnomah County Commissioner Jessica Vega Peterson. Here. Clackamas County Chair Tootie Smith. Here. Clackamas County Commissioner Sonia Fisher. Here. Clackamas County Commissioner Paul Savas. Present. Clackamas County Commissioner Martha Schrader. Here. Clackamas County Commissioner Mark Scholl. Here. Thank you, Chan. We have 14 present. Uh, first, I'll introduce our staff. Uh, Helping with the meeting today, we of course we have Shannon Bays, our clerk, and we have our legal advisor, County Counsel Stephen Magcor. Before we discuss the procedures here today, I'd like to welcome the three nominees chosen by the Democratic Party to replace former House Representative Anna Williams. They are Kirsten Dillon, Lori Kukler, and Nicholas Walden Publon. It has been decided these three nominees will speak in alphabetical order. I will now outline the procedures for today's meeting. In a few minutes, I will open up the meeting for public comment period over Zoom. This section will be limited to 20 minutes total. During this period, members of the public may provide comments over Zoom for up to one minute each. Members of the public should start by providing their names and addresses. Our clerk will instruct you to raise your hands when the time comes. Once we're done with public comment, we'll move to the opening statements. Each nominee will have an opportunity to make a two minute opening statement. The nominees will be called upon in alphabetical order. Once opening statements are completed, we will move to the question and answer portion of the meeting. Each nominee will have two minutes to answer each question. We will vary the order of the candidates' answers with each question. There will be one question posed by each board. We will uh, alternate asking the questions by board. Hood River County will ask the first, Multnomah County the second, and Clackamas County the final. This is not a public hearing, so no testimony will be received during or after the Q&A portion. Once the Q&A portion is completed, each candidate will be called upon to uh, provide a two minute closing statement, again, made in alphabetical order. Clerk Bays will keep the time for all answers and statements. After closing statements, we will recess if needed. Following that, we will begin deliberations. All commissioners will have a chance to comment during deliberations. After comments are made, I will call for a vote. The votes will be made in alphabetical order, ending with the three chairs. As provided by the Secretary of State, each Clackamas County Commissioner will have five votes. Each Hood River County Commissioner will have 
3.2 votes, and each Multnomah County Commissioner will have two votes. The votes are weighted to reflect the share of voters or electors in House District 52 uh, within each county. The votes will be tallied and recorded. State law says that a plurality is needed to appoint. So keep in mind, it is not a majority that's needed, but a plurality. The person who gets the most votes will be appointed. If no one receives a plurality, that is, if two or more candidates are tied in the votes, then I will call for another vote at that time. We will keep doing this until there is a winner. I may call for additional deliberations if a plurality does not emerge. And with that, I'm going to open up the meeting for public comment. Uh, this section will be limited to two minutes in total. Clerk Bays, you're up. Thank you, Clerk Smith. Uh, now is the time for those on Zoom. Wait, I'm on, am I on the wrong page? No. Sorry. Uh, now is the time for those on Zoom who wish to give public comment to use the raise hand feature. If you would like to give a comment, if you're on the phone, hit star nine. Per Chair Smith, you will have one minute to speak, at which point I will cut in. Please provide your name and area of residence to start your comments. Chair Smith, I see no raised hands. Well, this could be a short meeting. Really? We're just going to wait just one more second because I see we have 38 participants, uh, 15 commissioners, staff. Um, since we're going to, I'm going to wait just a few more minutes. I would also like to take this time to introduce uh, Jenny Magcore from Multnomah County and Lisa Davies for Hood River County. Thank you for um, offering your assistance as well. Uh, the more the merrier, as I say, in a process like this. Let me go out of this screen. Shannon, nobody's come on? No one is raising their hands, Chair. Who is? No one. Okay, well then, I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, thank you for all those wonderful public comments. <sighs> And now it's time for opening statements. To our nominees again, you have two minutes for your statement. Please be aware of your time. Ms. Dillon, you are up first. You have two minutes. Well, we can't hear you. Um, I believe you're on mute. You can start over and we will start over the time as well. Yeah, just Thank relax. Thank you, I appreciate that. Oh, Thank yeah, you, just Chair Smith. Yeah, just go ahead. You know um, what? We're not, we're not like picky, picky, picky. So just relax. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Um, so in, in starting, I just want to note how difficult the past few years have been for local government officials and to thank you all for your stewardship as county commissioners through this really difficult time. Uh, so my life here as a wife and a mother, teacher, family, physician, and volunteer has centered on service and community. My husband and I moved here with our daughters who were then three months and four years old after considering over 75 communities as places to land. That was the year 2000 and we never looked back. We raised our children here in the public schools, our local church, community sports and arts programs and volunteered to keep those activities strong for the benefit of all. During that time, I was a busy modern version of a country doctor, caring for people in the clinic and hospital while working with my partners to run our business ethically and effectively. In filling this vacancy, I wanna continue this calling to serve. I want to take the baton from Representative Williams and hand it off in January, having made progress and lost no ground, a well-executed three-person relay. Over the past decade, my work as a family physician has moved from one-on-one -on -one care towards care on a larger scale. It started in 2012 in a time of momentous change in the Oregon Health Plan. I stepped into a gap and led the founding of a coordinated care organization serving the Gorge. We were successful and kept local control of the programs and over $60 million in annual health care spending. Since then, I've worked in the leadership of that CCO in the U.S. Congress 
and with the state of Oregon's pandemic response, and I want to stay in public service. The people in my home community encouraged me to step up. They know who I am and what I can do. This includes former Representative Williams, who has given me her endorsement as her preferred candidate to fill out the rest of this term. It's an honor to be one of the nominees here today for consideration, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much, Ms. Dillon. We are going to go on to Ms. Kukler. You have two minutes. Thank you. Thank you for being here today, and I'm honored to be considered alongside these two highly qualified candidates. My name is Lori Kukler, and I'm the principal partner of Kukler Nonprofit uh, Consulting, and I've written over $20 million in successful government foundation and grant proposals. I work with teams of experts in social services, arts and culture, economic development, travel and tourism, environmental programs, and education. I'm able to quickly wrap my head around complex issues and help people provide highly objective as well as realistic funding plans. I'm also an adjunct professor at Southern New Hampshire University and I teach US government history and the liberal arts. I'm also a political activist facilitating an organization in Sandy, Oregon launched after we held the first Women's March on Sandy in 2017. I decided to keep that momentum going by facilitating monthly meetings designed to empower women to run for office and to provide them with practical information regarding state and local, local government structures, the electoral college, women's suffrage and rights, the court system, and the history of women's rights. My primary goals, if I'm selected, are basically two. I'm very concerned about constituent services. I wanna make sure that constituents have somewhere to go when they have immediate issues and that they will be responded to immediately. I plan to implement weekly meet and greets because I won't need to campaign because it's, it's not an incumbent position. I'll create a highly visible uh, office. And also I'm very concerned about the relationship between the county commissions and the state. There are several uh, momentous projects underway, such as the Clackamas County Courthouse that do need funding and in fact, increased funding. And I wanna make sure that we don't lose any momentum on any of the projects that the commissioners are trying to move forward at the state level. I appreciate this time today, and this has been an incredible process for me, and I'm honored to be a part of it. Thank you, Ms. Kukler. We go on to Mr. Walden Hublon. You're up, sir. Sir, you're on mute, I believe. I still can't hear you. You, um, you know, you might have pulled a Tootie Smith. I often turn off my the sound on my own computer so I'm not interrupted by anybody else. You might want to look at the bottom right hand where that little sound button is. We'll take the time. Mm. No, I cannot hear you. Uh, Shannon, can you help him walk him through his sound issue? Yes, Mr. Pooplin, if you would go to where it says mute on the bottom of your Zoom screen and select up and then ask uh, at the very top, it says select microphone. You're gonna wanna make sure that the correct microphone is checked on your screen. Do you see that? Oh, it appears he is joining by phone. <laughs> Uh, say again, please. Can anyone hear me now? Yes. Okay. Okay. Wow. What an awful thing to have happen. Um, you know what? I want Just to don't worry about it and go forward. Okay. Well, I want to thank everyone for giving me those few seconds and for me to give you a little break there. I want to thank Lori and Kristen. I think you're both phenomenal people. Um, anybody who gets chosen for this process, I'm happy for. I want to thank the commissioners for being there today and for taking a listen to us and for making this really important decision. Like I said, 
My name is Nick Walden Publon. I am a lifelong Oregonian, born and raised. I grew up in Lane County and Lynn County, where I milked cows for my first job and then worked my way up slowly, being the first person in my family to go to college and was and, and got my master's uh, as a bachelor's and then went on to get my master's in history as well and taught there. It was during my first year of grad school that I was diagnosed with a brain tumor, unfortunately. And I found out that the, that the health insurance at the university at that time was really not great. And so what I did is I started a student health advisory board. And within three months, we fired the health insurance company that we had. And we renegotiated health insurance with a new company at a much lower rate. It's the health insurance that they're still using today. And in fact, once I finished my master's, I didn't have to look for a job because the university offered me a job to run the health insurance plan that I had started. And I did that for 10 years. And I'm proud of the work that I did. And then it came time to work in my own community. And that's when I found Ant Farm. And that's where I've been doing drug and alcohol prevention work since April. I'm very proud of the work that I do there. I'm very proud of the youngsters that we work with. I'm very proud of the work that I do with the Clackamas County. Um, I am running for this position because I want to make sure that everyone in this district knows that there's still representation even during this gap. And I plan on being around the entire district, visiting Hood River, Sandy, the areas that take place in Multnomah County, and the entire district. I have a car for a reason, and I'm happy to use it. Thank you, everyone, for this process, and thanks for that little hiccup, and I, uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walden Publon. Now we will move on to our Q&A period. All candidates will have two minutes to answer the questions. Clerk Bays will keep the time. The first question will be posed by Hood River County. In order, answers for this question will be provided by Ms. Dillon, then Ms. Kukler, and then Mr. Publa. Hood River County, please go ahead. Yes, thank you all for being here. Um, I'm Mike Coates, Chair of Hood River County. And our question today is why are you interested in serving in the short-term appointment. Thank you. Ms. Dillon, you're up. Thank you, Chair Oates. Uh, so there's a, there's a personal aspect and there's a service aspect. Um, the, the personal side of things is I've been interested in elective office for a while um, and always was in situations where the jobs I was doing didn't allow me to step away or to add that to, to, my, to my career. Um, that's different this time as the pandemic response in the state has wound down. I've stepped away from that. I'm building up my own consulting um, company to mostly around health policy um, and, and to find myself available and able to serve. Um, so I see it as a wonderful opportunity for me to have the experience of being part of the legislature and really learning more about um, what, that, um, what that's like and what it's like to be an elected official. Um, on, the, on the service front, I think there's four really important things. Um, the constituents of the district do need representation. Um, they need people to help them navigate government and as an advocate if they fall through the cracks. Um, there's some things that Representative Williams has briefed me on that need someone keeping an eye on them. Some, a special purpose allocation for agriculture around wildfire, the rollout of the 988 crisis line, the around the mountain access issues. Um, I see myself as in being a good colleague and an advocate on issues that I know we're going to discuss today in the legislative work groups that are getting ready for the next session, even though I won't, would not be there um, when the next session takes place. And finally, just using the standing as an elected official to approach problems creatively. Um, it's not always a law that's needed. Um, and when I look at particularly the barriers to housing in our unincorporated communities, um, I wonder if the path to a solution could be some convening of the stakeholders from across these three counties, this district, um, to see if there's ways to elevate the issues facing our rural population centers um, throughout the district. Thank you very much for that. Uh, next up is uh, Ms. Kuchler. You have two minutes. Thank you. This is a this is a very good question because uh, motives uh, play a, a large role in, in what we do and what makes us get up in the morning and want to move forward. For me, as someone who, who is intrinsically interested in government and always have been, as a, as a young girl, I always saw myself as an outsider of government because everybody we studied and everybody we considered uh, didn't, was not anyone like I would become except for a few. 
Uh, there were always those inspiring women in politics. Now, for me, quite frankly, on the personal side, it would be an incredible honor. Um, and I'm speaking selfishly right now. I, I would be honored to serve in this capacity. I, I imagine how it might feel to walk in the doors of the state capitol serving in this role, even if I don't attend a session or I'm not selected by a committee. Simply uh, the, the act of serving the constituency and the public leaders in House District 52 uh, would be an honor. Um, I have the time. I think one of the things that's really significant uh, with regard to this is that the person filling this role really must have time. I got my ducks in a row and I really will be able to implement uh, a good amount of time to this. And that's why I have such an aggressive program for high visibility and meet and greets and response time to calls. People need to realize that they do have a representative available to them who is interested in hearing what they have to say and helping them navigate a system that is sometimes very difficult to understand. And I have the autonomy to do that because I can contact the university and say, hey, I'm not going to take any classes next term. So I'm in a good position to do that. I have very strong interest in the people of House District 52 before we change to the redistricting format. I wanna help people understand what redistricting does mean and doesn't mean. Mm -hmm. And I wanna make sure that the constituents have uh, someone available to them at all times. Thank you, Ms. Kukler. Now up is Mr. Publon. I would just say that I believe in the power of democracy and the importance of local government. And that is one of the reasons, major reasons why I have decided to put my hat in the ring for this position. I wanna make sure that local constituents know that they are still covered, that they still have someone that's listening to their needs and is going to be there to meet their needs. I also think of, see myself as getting sent to Salem in this condition as a, a, a chance to make a investment in the future. I will be involved in community politics for the next coming for the next couple of decades. I've committed to running for office, to being raising my hand continually throughout the next coming mm -hmm. years in order to be involved in what's happening here in Sandy, Hood River, and throughout District 52. I will actually be in 52 after it splits. So 52 will be my district before and after the re uh, redistricting takes place. I really believe that I, I have gained a lot from being an Oregonian and have had a lot of fortune thrown my way. And I wanna be able to give that back. It would be an honor to represent this district in Salem. And uh, I would be very, very honored to have the position. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Publon. I'm gonna deviate from the script for a moment, uh, panels. Uh, there may have been a technical difficulty that kept people in the chat room from raising their hands, but I'm gonna kick it back over to Shannon Bays, our clerk. Shannon, what's the status of that? Um, thank you, Chair. We've just tested and we know that the raise hand feature is now working for sure. And so at this time, um, if you would like, we can call for anyone to raise their hand from the attendees. Uh, yes, let's go ahead and do that. I know this is out of order, but if anybody is in there, I don't want to miss them. And I don't want them to think that their comments or their questions are not important just because of a technical error. Thank you. Uh, so if any of the attendees would like to give public comment at this time, please use the raise hand feature at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you would like to give a comment, if you're on the phone, you may hit star nine to do the same. For Chair Smith, you would have one minute to speak at which point I will cut in. We'll just wait a few seconds, Shannon, to see if anybody wants to speak. I see no raised hands, Chair. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and continue with the script. Thank you. The second question will be posed by Multnomah County Commission Lori, Commissioner Lori Stegman. In order of the answers for this question will be provided by Ms. Kugler, Mr. Uh, Walden Publon and Ms. Dillon. Commissioner Stegman, please go ahead. Thank you, Chair. And thank you to all of our candidates for throwing in your hats. As you all know, House District 52 includes Multnomah, Clackamas, and Hood River counties. 
With this large geographic area, there are a wide range of issues that impact our communities. With the short duration of this appointment, please describe how you will represent the many interests of such a large and diverse district. Uh, Ms. Kukler, you're up. Wow, uh, two minutes. Um, <laughs> first of all, uh, getting back to my two priorities, I will allow the uh, issues to determine uh, the direction that I would respond. Three months is a very short period of time. And there are a variety of issues that are currently underway right now, uh, with particularly with funding at the state level and policies being made at the state level within various committees that are going to be meeting for their final time in this uh, session in September. So that timeline is extremely short. With that in mind, the thing to do would be to respond directly to the constituents' calls. If someone has been waiting for a representative or they've had to go to other sources, those have become high priorities, whether it be with regard to housing, whether it be with regard to understanding funding systems, whether it be with regard to healthcare, whatever the case may be, to help someone navigate the system will be the top priority. And that covers all of the areas of all three counties. I do know that the systems are different within each county, so it would, be, it would require an awareness of all. I've lived in all three counties at one point or another, so I'm very aware of the, the demographics and I'm very aware of the constituencies per situation. The way that I would do this, quite frankly, is uh, because there would be for me a learning curve, I would reach out to my many contacts within each county and within each system. When it comes to deciding what to do and when to do first, I would be in contact with the county chairs because, for example, with the, um, the Clackamas County Courthouse, there is a bond conversation taking place right now that cannot lose momentum. And because of uh, increased inflationary costs, uh, there might need to be more pass-through funds from the state. So that conversation needs representation at the state level. And I'm gonna assume, thank you, I'm gonna assume there'll be more issues like that on my plate. Thank you, Ms. Kukler. <clears throat> uh, up next is Mr. Kublon. Well, you're right. It is a big district. There are three counties that are represented here. And I think one of the ways that I would make sure that I reach out to an entire county is covering issues that, that really I have heard so far apply to all three counties. And they may apply to all three counties differently, but those three things are education, healthcare, and houselessness, three major issues that I would really, really be focusing on, making sure that we're making that making those connections, that people are getting help, that I am that the constituents know that they have someone to reach out to during this time. I have a car for a reason. I said that during one of the uh, discussions about who would be representing this district. And that's because I would make that car of use of it and be traveling around the district. I like the idea of having weekly meetings with constituents at different places, making sure that we're going out to reach out to those in, in uh, Hood River as well as out in Multnomah County. I would make sure to use technology. And believe it or not, I do know how to use a Zoom um, and would be using that as a way of reaching out to folks, um, contrary to what y'all have seen, um, reaching out to folks, uh, using the telephone, using social media. I have over 50,000 followers on, on social media. I would be using that to reach out to folks to make sure that they know that there is someone still representing them, that they still have a phone, call, phone number that they can call and that there's still an email address and that someone's answering that. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Ms. Dillon, you're up. Yeah, um, this makes me think a little bit of the, when I did my CCO work. Um, it was a multi-county structure, um, also sharing some with Central Oregon counties. And a piece of the way that we served the whole region was honestly, we, keep, we kept track. We kept track of where we held meetings. We kept track of where we spent our time and how staff was allocated. Um, and I honestly see myself doing something similar just to ensure that I really am both in my behind the scenes and my in-person work mirroring the population of the district. Um, I want there to be plenty of opportunities for people in Sandy and Corbett and Rhododendron, Gresham um, to be in touch and meet with me in person. When I think about moving forward on issues, words like strategy and prioritization come to mind and that's something that will need to emerge I think in the first 
month or so of the appointment. Um, collaboration comes to mind. There's dozens of state representatives and state senators representing Multnomah and Clackamas County. So understanding what's sort of taken care of, what issues have an advocate and the right amount of voice and, and where are their holes or where can adding my voice make a difference. As I think about the issues I've learned about, um, there's some funding issues I know in Clackamas County around the courthouse um, and also the C-800 emergency communication system that may need attended to either in the next session or even by the e-board um, in their December meeting. Um, there's a lot of controversy and I know years and years of work around transportation in Metro and particularly I-5 and 205 tolling. Um, I would wanna be very mindful and up on that. Um, the ones that I hear sort of carrying over is housing. Um, I don't know what my role would need to be in supporting moves in more urban and developed efforts. I definitely see a potential role in understanding the needs of unincorporated communities that nonetheless look like towns and how we can help them maximize their role in meeting the state's housing needs. Um, and I guess finally, just thinking about uh, transportation and roads and the issues we have with congestion and safety along the gorge, along old highway 30, along 26 and 35 going up the mountain and just seeing what there is um, that can be done um, to get ready to move towards solutions areas as well. Thank you very much for your comments, all of you. <clears throat> Clackamas County will pose the third question that will be asked by Vice Chair Martha Schrader. In order, answers for this question will be provided by Mr. Walden Publon, then Ms. Dillon, and then Ms. Kukler. Please go ahead, Vice Chair Schrader. Thank you so much. And um, it is an honor for me to be here and um, listen to such uh, articulate candidates for this position. Mount Hood is right in the center of your district. In addition to your residents, the protection of the mountain its forest lands and its economy are a big responsibility for the House District 52 seat. What will you be working on these next four months to ensure our greatest natural resources can thrive both now and in the future? Thank you for that, Mr. Walden Publon. You're up first. Wow, that's a very big question. I think what I would do first and foremost is make sure that local businesses are being supported, that they are that they are tuned into what's available at the state and county level, that they are that they are not impeded at all in making sure that they can continue to run an economy that is um, that is strong. I'm working on a project right now with Ant Farm actually to get young folks out and about and into businesses and to the mountain, to parks, to different things like that. Because after the pandemic, we've had a couple of years where it's been really hard to get folks to get out, to, to the, support their local economy, to go to the local parks and recreation places. So I would continue to work on projects like that, making sure that we are um, promoting those the great things that we have that are part of Mount Hood and making sure that those resources are protected at the same time with local ordinances and that the uh, resources are protected. And that one of the ways that we do that is, by, like I said, by supporting local businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Publon. Ms. Dillon, you're up. Thanks. Um, so this is a this is a big one. And the main thing I approach it with is a lot of humility because things like this um, get to this level and this level of complexity because they're really hard. Um, you know, the stewardship of the, of the land on Mount Hood includes federal land, county land, private land, tribal land. Um, there's uh, economic component even of the forest itself and the way that it's um, used, I know especially by Hood River County to help fund um, fund their budget and their operations through their responsible forestry techniques. And forestry is also one of Oregon's um, key industries, um, including the new sorts of manufactured timber and other products um, that Oregon's trying to be a leader in. Um, I think about the role of tourism, um, which is a piece of the economies in all of these places, um, the importance of protecting that, as well as the other businesses that in many cases bring us higher wage jobs that may um, that also contribute to the community. 
Um, and I think especially around the federal, you know, I've, I've worked in the woods, I've been a ski patroller, I've been an employed staffer in the woods. I understand, for instance, how hard it is to maintain a trail or a facility that's in a wilderness area, even though in general on the face of it, something being a wilderness area sounds like a great idea. Um, and so I just think um, using, my con using my background and my connections, um, I, I do know Representative Blumenauer, I know both of our senators, um, to ensure that the decisions that we make on the mountain are really balancing um, all of those interests, um, not the least of which is equitable um, contributions towards the cost of search and rescue on the mountain, which I know right now is disproportionately borne um, by Hood River and Clackamas counties. Thanks. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Ms. Dillon. Ms. Kukler, you're up. Uh, thank you. This is a, a huge question. I live. Um, halfway up Mount Hood myself, and um, I'm keenly aware of the challenges faced in the region. Um, I've written several grants, uh, actually, yeah, assisting a variety of interests on the mountain, everywhere from economic uh, to even a few for-profit organizations that uh, wanted assistance with managing traffic. Uh, I guess a high priority for me would be uh, something that I've already been working with, which is the reduction of traffic, different creative systems by which people can get up on into the recreational areas without the intense level of traffic as bus systems and different kayak delivery systems and all sorts of things are already programs that I'm engaged with as we speak, just by virtue of my uh, nonprofit or uh, consulting firm. Um, I think the most important thing to keep in mind with this, with this position is it's a three month position. And so humility is in order. Uh, I will quickly recognize what kinds of things are already underway, whether it's regard to forestry, whether it's regard to tra uh, traffic, whether it's regard to economic development. And I will quickly wrap my head around them the same way I do with a grant project and try to make sure that I'm not a barrier, that in fact, I'm someone who will help, whether it's a, uh, a tree farmer or a, uh, a, na a gel nail uh, business on the highway that is uh, losing revenue because of an ODOT project, I will be quickly, quickly in place to try to help mitigate whatever uh, needs to be managed during the interim between uh, Anna Williams and the next person representing the mountain. Thank you very much for that. Uh, at this time in the script, I uh, will ask for uh, closing statements or an optional recess. I'm going to opt not to have a recess as we're only 45 minutes into this. And unless somebody wants a recess, please raise your hand and tell me. I think we're gonna move right on. Thank you very much. It is now time for closing statements. To our nominees again, you have two minutes for your statement. Clerk Bays will keep the time. We will go in alphabetical order. Ms. Dillon, you are up. Two minutes for your closing statement. Thank you, Chair Smith. So over the course of a couple dozen conversations with residents and elected officials um, from the district, I've heard really good stories. I've learned about some issues that are specific to a county or a community and about ones that are shared across um, this largely rural district. Uh, roads and transportation, housing, economy, and safety all came through loud and clear in those conversations. Um, I'm grateful I've gotten to meet Nick and Lori and the PCPs from around the district to hear about their lives and what matters to them. So I approached the city with ambition, but also humility, uh, solving the really pressing issues, many of which I've outlined above will take years and not months. Um, if I'm chosen as your representative, it's my intention to represent these shared needs in the district. Um, while we have statewide problems, I've seen too often that statewide solutions just don't translate well to rural and remote communities. They're hard to scale, something about them doesn't quite work, and I think it's crucial to have leaders with experience in rural Oregon to help craft solutions that scale and align with how the issues manifest for us. Honestly, I think one of the most important parts of this role is writing a really great departure memo. 
Um, it's what I've done whenever I've left a job or a role, and it's how I brief my successor on the issues. Um, I think introducing the successor to the colleagues and local officials and constituents um, who I end up working with will be very important. Um, and so as a representative for House District 52, it would be my goal to do what I can to serve the people, um, to tie up loose ends um, of things that are being implemented from the current legislative session and me and I kept on them and to keep things moving forward for the good of the region. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dillon. Up next is um, Ms. Kukler. You have two minutes for your closing statement. I grew up in rural Washington state. Uh, my family were wheat fa farmers in uh, originally in the Dayton area, Colotus, Dayton. Um, my family moved to Pullman, had a shoe store. Um, my parents moved a lot and I've lived all over the, the uh, Pacific Northwest. I understand the rural mindset. I, I'm a bit of a unicorn. I'm a Democrat that understands the rural mindset and I appreciate the tension that I experience in that role. I remember times in Eastern Washington when Olympia made decisions that, that were so harmful to myself and my farming friends that it almost destroyed livelihoods. I'm someone who's going to have my ear to the tracks for that kind of a situation in Salem. And I will be very attentive to make sure that my constituents, if I'm chosen, will have an ear that will take their needs directly to whoever needs to hear it in Salem, if only for three months. I also used to live in Cascade Locks and I lived in Cascade Locks for a few months in a car with my mother. And I'm a first generation college graduate. I understand when someone has a need and they call my office that they are calling me because they're undergoing probably a living hell. And I will listen and I will redirect if I can and I will do whatever I can to make sure that they are heard and that they're connected with the people who can guide them through the steps they need to take in order to make their life a little better. Thank you, Ms. Kubler, on that. Uh, Mr. Walden Kublon, you're up. Two minutes, closing statement. Thank you, Chair Smith. Thank you, Lori, and thank you, Kristen, both for being a part of this. Um, I am a rural Oregonian. I was born a rural Oregonian and have been a rural Oregonian my entire life. Even when I worked in downtown Portland at Portland State University, I still lived in Sandy for 15 years. Um, I have had the opportunity of being a rural Oregonian, but someone who also has to work within the, you know, within a larger city at Multnomah County. I believe in the importance of democracy. I believe strongly in the importance of local government. I believe even more strongly in the, in the, the fact that we need to have multiple voices around the table. Um, if I'm selected, I, it, it's a th short three months. I won't be able to tackle every issue, but I have a history of finding out that there's a problem and going to fix that problem, no matter what the problem may be. And I can promise to the constituents of this district that if I do find problems, if there are things that need to be addressed, I'm the first person that goes to address those issues and that I wanna be uh, uh, the representative for this district. It would be a major honor. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Walden Pubalon. At this point, folks, we can either take a recess or go right into deliberations. Do I hear a motion for recess or shall we keep going? Let's, I, keep, go, let's keep going. Okay, thank you very much. Just want to give that option of, uh, to you folks. Okay, we're going to begin deliberations in a minute. But again, I'd like to go over how this process works. The order of deliberations and comments will be in reverse alphabetical order, but the chairs will speak last. After comments are made by all commissioners, I will call for a vote. The votes will be made in alphabetical order, ending with the chairs. As provided by the Secretary of State, each, uh, each 
Clackamas County Commissioner will have five votes. Each Hood River County Commissioner will have 3.2 votes. And each Multnomah County Commissioner will have two votes. The votes are weighted to reflect the share of voters or electors in House District 52 living within each county. The votes will be tallied and recorded. State law says that a plurality is needed to appoint. So keep that in mind. It's not a majority that's needed, but a plurality. The person who gets the most votes will be appointed. If no one receives a plurality, that is if two or more candidates are tied in the votes, then I will call for another vote at that time. We will keep doing this until there is a winner. I may call for an additional deliberations if a plurality does not emerge. Are there any questions about this? Seeing none, thank you. And with that, Let's go to deliberations. We'll go in reverse alphabetical order, ending with the chairs. No commissioner should feel obligated to provide comments. You don't have to speak. You may simply pass if you wish on your deliberations. We will start with Commissioner Vega Peterson. Would you like to make a comment? Thank you, Chair Smith. Yes, I would. Um, first of all, I just want to say how much I appreciate Dr. Dillon, Ms. Um, Kuchler and Mr. Walden um, Publan for putting yourselves forward to go through this appointment process. It is not an easy thing to do. And I admire each of you for um, how this shows your commitment to public service. Um, I also appreciate um, Dr. Dylan and Ms. Kuchler for reaching out to me and for having the opportunity to speak one-on-one -on -one with you to learn more about your backgrounds, your reasons for seeking this appointment and the plans that you have for this office if you're appointed. Um, I didn't have a chance to speak with you, um, Mr. Walden, uh, Walden um, Huban, although we didn't get a chance to speak, I did appreciate learning about you today, and I can't say how important the work you're currently doing with Ant Farm is, so I appreciate that. Um, I was impressed by how all of the candidates spoke about the importance of constituent work and your plans for doing that work if you were appointed. Um, that shows me that you have a really good grasp of the nature of the job of a state representative during an interim session. Um, I was appreciated the, the aims and the highlights of communication and visibility during the months that you would have this appointment. But in making the decision about who to appoint, two things really struck out for me. And one was that in addition to talking about the importance of doing constituent work, Dr. Dillon also mentioned the importance of following up on legislation that had been passed in the previous session as it goes through rulemaking and as it goes through implementation, as well as in working to get legislation ready for next session. And that showed me a very deep understanding of what a legislature needs to focus on in the run up to the 2023 session. And it was also meaningful to me that um, Dr. Dillon has the appointment of the current representative of the district, um, uh, Anna Williams, to really show that there's going to be a steady continuation of work happening in House District 52 um, for the constituents there. So because of that, those reasons, I will be supporting um, Kristen Dillon for this process. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now we will go to the next commissioner. I want to say our clerk has moved the three nominees to attendee status on this Zoom meeting. Uh, commissioner Lori Stegman, you're up. Thank you, Chair Smith. Uh, I would echo uh, much of what uh, Commissioner Vega Peterson has said as far as the attributes that each one of these candidates possess. Uh, thank you all so much for, for running. And it's kind of an unusual appointment for such a short time period, uh, which makes it all the more challenging and uh, m makes me appreciate so much that you're all willing to step up for such a short time period. Uh, I appreciated Dr. Dillon. I, I think that, that she would be tremendous uh, with her health policy background. Uh, and of course, with Anna Williams' endorsement, I think that that's, uh, you know, she's very uh, high, highly regarded. Uh, and uh, Mr. Walden uh, Puvan, I appreciate your activism around health policy policy and supporting uh, our youth around drug and alcohol issues. Uh, Ms. Kukler, uh, I really appreciated uh, the work that you've done around grant writing and your vast experience of you know, living in many parts uh, of the Pacific Northwest. And I feel like you have a, a deep understanding of uh, the different struggles that different communities are faced with. Uh, so I will be casting my vote for Ms. Kukler. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Stegman. Clackamas County Commissioner Mark Scholl, you're up. Yes, good evening. <laughs> and I'd like to thank the Democratic Party for presenting these three outstanding candidates. Any one of them would make a very, very good representative. Briefly, um, I was impressed by all of their answers to the questions uh, tonight. Uh, I'm gonna cast a vote for Nick Walden and Blue Blonde. Uh, I was impressed with his eagerness to get out and do public engagement, which I think would be very important over the next three months. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Scholl. Clackamas County Commissioner Martha Schrader. Well, I wanna thank all the candidates. Um, as someone, and I think uh, Chair Smith, so have you as well been through this process before, uh, not only working to choose candidates, but also being one of the folks, in a sense, on the hot seat, uh, answering the questions of your peers to be evaluated. Uh, I was impressed with all three of you, quite frankly. Uh, I, Mr. Poulon, I, I absolutely uh, admire what you are doing at the Ant Farm. Uh, you are one of our premier uh, community organizations in the county that serves youth in a way that feels a real need for what we need to be happening here. Uh, I want to uh, also, <clears throat> just trying to find my paperwork here, excuse me for a moment. Uh, Dr. Dillon, you were, uh, background in public health and system leadership uh, is outstanding. Uh, you uh, truly have been a pillar of really how to manage health care, how to really pull together communities, particularly in a time when we have been faced uh, in the most recent past with uh, huge public health issues. I commend you on that. I commend you for your, your work on the Oregon Medicaid program uh, and for all your work in, in the area. You have also, in my mind, uh, displayed a uh, significant knowledge of Clackamas County and the issues that we are facing. Uh, finally, Ms. Kukler, I uh, am very aware of what you do. Uh, I, have, uh, I have a very fondness for Sandy. I remember uh, you being involved and I get quite a bit of information for you about how you help to empower women uh, to move into the political process. And I admire the fact that you have stepped up to the plate. Uh, I also admire the fact that you are a very prolific grant writer. And as someone who has also done that in the past, I know how, uh, how quickly you do have to wrap your head around what is happening so you can understand issues quickly. So this is a very tough uh, choice for me. Uh, uh, I think at this point, however, I am going to cast my vote for Ms. Kugler. Thank you. Cootie, you're on mute. No, I'm not. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Schrader. Uh, Commissioner Savas, you're up. Yeah, uh, I wanna thank all the candidates for um, their uh, going through this process um, and submitting their applications and um, really great candidates. It's gonna be a tough choice for me and I haven't really made up my mind at this moment yet. So I'm still coming back through all of the, uh, the um, um, correspondence um, and, and information here. So. Um, I have really impressed with everyone um, and their in their comments. So um, though, that concludes my comments, Chair. Thank you very much, Commissioner Savas. Uh, Hood River County Commissioner Les Perkins. Well, I too want to thank all three of you for um, submitting your applications and coming to the interview today. Um, in my mind, the most important thing for this short appointment is somebody who can be up to speed really quickly and, and to carry on the work that Anna Williams was doing. And uh, in the responses that were given today, I feel like Kristen Dillon was the most succinct and most informed of the three candidates. So I will be casting my vote for, for Dr. Dillon. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Perkins. Multnomah County Commissioner Sharon Myron, you're up. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not sure how this is. Not sure how this is. Not sure. I'm going to hope that this works. I had to, anyway, I had you on my phone because having internet issues right now. But um, I, uh, too, want to thank all all of the candidates um, who are here today. The nominees um, are are really uh, exceptional. And I know it's not easy to run for office, air quotes there, um, whether you're on the ballot or in an appointment process or whether it's three months or, you know, or for the duration. Uh, so thanks to all of you. And really each of you is well qualified to serve the people of House District 52. So, um, you know, of course that makes it all the more difficult. Uh, and I appreciate I, uh, another thanks to those who uh, provided their insight and opinions on, um, on this race, and it was very helpful. Uh, Ms. Kukler, I love that, that you're a unicorn. Uh, you have done so much for the community, and I just loved hearing about the um, diversity of uh, work and experiences that you bring to all that you do. And so I, I just deeply appreciate all that you have done and I know will continue to do. Um, Mr. Walden Publon, I really appreciated your sharing your story today and some of those uh, really incredible accomplishments you made in light of the life circumstances that you faced and that work in, um, you know, addressing healthcare, uh, taking healthcare on and making a, a change. So that is wonderful. And also your dedication to community engagement. Uh, and and uh, today I will be casting my vote for Dr. Kristen Dillon. And, you know, I, I would like to um, just reemphasize some of the points that were raised, but, uh, in particular, that work in healthcare is is really on the front line, caring for people in the community. And I know the incredible importance of the connections you make to so many real people. And um, you know, we talk about engaging with the people most impacted by policies we make, and that is direct engagement with hundreds, thousands of people. So that's really exceptional experience. And with the CCO, that is at the policy level, bringing together so many of these issues for people who face the highest barriers in our communities. And healthcare these days is pretty much everything. I mean, it's climate, environmental justice, social determinants of health, and we've all heard housing is healthcare. So to have the, this kind of experience you could bring to um, the seat, even for just three months, would be really exceptional. And it does make, you know, it means a lot that former Representative Anna Williams endorsed you uh, because it really encourages me to know that you will just um, be informed about that deep work and be able to sort of take it on. Uh, and I think your departure departure memo will be fabulous and you will, um, the people coming after you will appreciate it. Um, anyway, thanks, thanks to all of you. Thank you, um, Commissioner Myron. Next up is Hood River County Commissioner, Karen Joplin. Thank you, Chair Smith. I agree with all of the strong and positive comments about all the three candidates. I feel grateful we have an opportunity to consider three very qualified and passionate individuals willing to serve with public service. I hope that um, after this decision is made that all three continue to pursue their passion and interests in serving in some form. Um, I will be casting my vote for Kristen Dillon. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Karen Joplin. Up next, is uh, Clackamas County Commissioner Sonia Fisher. Did it. <laughs> and to unmute there, sorry about that. Not used to uh, Zooming these days. 
Wow, this has been very inspiring. I really appreciate all of the input of everyone who's been sharing their comments about these three amazing candidates. And I have to do a Commissioner Savas. I'm still going through and thinking about, about how, how I will cast my vote because I really could choose any one of the three and feel that House District 52 was in excellent hands and that we as commissioners would have really strong representation in relationship and community in working forward um, during these next, next few months. So I'm gonna hold off on how I actually cast my vote, but I just wanna say thank you so much for being here <laughs> and sharing your gifts and talents with, with the community. Thank you, Commissioner Fisher. Up next is Hood River County Commissioner, Bob Benton. Uh, thanks, Chair Smith. I'd like to thank the uh, nominees for very thoughtful statements and uh, answers to the questions. Uh, really excited to see all of you uh, coming forward to serve, uh, <clears throat> serve the state of Oregon and specifically District 52. Um, and I guess at this point, you know, if, if the vote happens before 430, you'll hear about who I'm supporting. If it doesn't, you won't. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Benton. Hood River County Commissioner, Arthur Babbitts, you're up. Uh, thank you very much, Chair Smith. Uh, when I heard uh, about this process that we were going to go through for this three-month appointment, I didn't hold much hope for uh, us getting uh, good candidates, and I have been proven completely wrong. Um, I love all three of them. I'm really impressed at these folks who've, who've, who are willing to fill this gap, uh, and I beg all of them to stay involved in local government, uh, and I suspect I don't have to beg too much because that seems to be your personality, and I'm sure that you will be. Uh, I, uh, to be very brief, I am most interested in continuity, uh, and I believe uh, Dr. Dillon will do the best job at providing the continuity. Uh, 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 and so that's, that's what I'm going to be voting for. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Babbitts, Hood River County Chair, Mike Oates, you're up. Thank you, Chair Smith. Um, in this day and age, it's amazing that you get three good candidates for anything. So uh, thank you all three for applying and being great representatives. And we've got a real good choice today. And I'll be voting here in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner uh, Oates. Uh, Multnomah County Chair, Deborah Kafori, you're up. Thank you. And um, I want to apologize for turning my camera on and off. I've been trying not to blow my nose in public. As you can tell, I'm, I'm sick. I probably could call on Dr. Dillon for some medical advice. But um, I uh, appreciate um, everyone coming today and I'm um, really excited to see all my fellow county commissioners um, from our region as well. Good to see you all. Um, I will be casting my vote when the time comes to vote. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Chair Kafori. Uh, my comments, I wrote down a few things. Uh, first of all, uh, I too am very happy of the qualifications of these candidates. Uh, Mr. Publon, Gee, if we appoint you, that means you're not gonna be at the ant farm in Clackamas County anymore. And that will be a huge loss. Ant farm has been very successful and we rely on that nonprofit a lot to deliver services. Uh, Ms. Kukler, I so appreciate your grant writing abilities. Years and years ago, before I even got into politics, I took these grant writing classes and there is uh, a knack to it. And I appreciate that. I appreciate your activism, your promotion of women in uh, politics, especially. Um, Dr. Dillon, you made uh, some interesting comments. Of course, you all commented on the needs for Clackamas County, and we know what those are, but you mentioned our ski patrol, that we are disproportionately paying for rescues on Mount Hood. Not many people know that. Our sheriff's department shares the brunt of that huge, huge cost when people from across Oregon, America, and even the world come to mountain climb on Mount Hood, and that cost to us is very, very expensive for the rescues. And there are still some bodies up on, um, on the mountain and that the families are pushing to get out. We just can't get up there and do it. So that is a very unique perspective, perspective that you have. I too will be holding my vote to the very end. Um, with that in mind, uh, we are going to call for the votes. Uh, if a plurality of votes emerges for a given nominee, 
That is the appointment. The votes will be made in alphabetical order, ending with the chairs. Shannon, I'm going to ask that you call for the poll. And go slowly because I'm taking notes too. Chair, uh, Commissioner Babbitts. Uh, Dr. Dillon. Commissioner Bitten. Dr. Dillon. Commissioner Fisher. Uh, I would like to cast my vote for um, Ms. Kukler. Commissioner Joplin. Kristen Dillon. Commissioner Myron. Uh, Dr. Dillon. Commissioner Perkins. Kristen Dillon. Commissioner Savas. Uh, Lori Kugler. Mr. Strader. Sorry, you're muted, Commissioner. Uh, Lori Kugler, please. Mr. Stoll. Nick Publon. Commissioner Stegman. Lori Kugler. Commissioner, Commissioner Vega Peterson. Kristen Dillon. Chair Oates. Dr. Dillon. Chair Kafori. Kristen Dillon. Chair Smith. Uh, Ms. Cooper. I have a tie. I do, I do as well. too. I do too. <clears throat> 22 to 22 for Dylan and Kugler, five for Walden Poblon. I haven't had that yet in my 55 appointments that I've done. This is kind of exciting. <laughs> it is kind of exciting. Now, does everybody agree with uh, Council Matt Core's arithmetic? Let's first establish that the numbers are right before we vote again. We have two other attorneys online. Do you agree with that as well? Hold on one second. I have my backup. Chair, Dylan Chair Smith, if you can give me one moment, I'm still calculating. Okay, uh, Ms. Magcore, this will be interesting. Perhaps we can start by verifying the votes that we have um, because I'm coming up with some different numbers. So Clackamas County, one vote uh, for Nick. And I apologize for not using last names. It's just how I have it written down, folks. Mm -hmm. uh, and four votes for Lori. Hood River has uh, all votes for Kristen Dillon. Multnomah County has three votes for uh, Dylan and one for uh, Kugler, Ms. Lori. Are we all in agreement that that's how the votes came out? And what is the math on that, Jenny? Still working on it. That's okay. <laughs> lawyer, lawyer, not a mathematician, one moment. <laughs> So I'm going to recite it real quick, okay? Sure. I have Babbitts for Dylan. He's 3.2. I have Benton for Dylan, 3.2. I have Fisher for Kukler, 5. No Jayapal. I have Joplin for Dylan, 3.2. I have Myron for Dylan, 2. I have Perkins for Dylan, 3.2. Savis for Kugler, five. Schrader for Kugler, five. Scholl for Publon, five. Stegman for Kugler at two. Vega Peterson, Dylan at two. Mike Oates, 3.2 to Dylan. Gafori, two to Dylan. Smith, five to Kugler. And that comes out to my numbers 22, 22 to five. And I have Dylan Blaylock as a backup. Dylan, can you chime in? Um, 
Stephen, uh, Dylan is one of the attendees. I am also working from his change shift. I can bring him in as a... Yes, he says 22, 22 to 5. So he's, he agrees with this number. Okay, I think we have a consensus that we have a tied vote. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to call for a revote. All right. And I believe I'm going to go down to the same order. And so with that in mind, Shannon, would you like to take the poll again? Commissioner Babbitts. Uh, I will stay with uh, Dr. Dillon. Commissioner Benton. No, I will also stay with Dr. Dillon. Commissioner Fisher. Lori Kukler. Commissioner Joplin. Kristen Dillon. Commissioner Myron. Kristen Dillon. Commissioner Perkins. Kristen Dillon. Commissioner Savas. Maintain my vote for Lori Kukler. Commissioner Schrader. Maintain my vote for Lori Kukler. Commissioner Schull. Lori Kukler. Commissioner Stegman. Maintain my vote for Lori Kukler. Commissioner Vega Peterson. I maintain my vote for Kristen Dillon. Chair Oates. Dr. Dillon. Chair Kafori. Kristen Dillon. Chair Smith. Um, Ms. Kukler. You, you have a plurality, 27 to 22. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, in conclusion, I'd like to invite any concluding comments from any member of our board on this. Commissioners? Anybody would like to make a comment? Commissioner Kafori. I would just like to say congratulations. Um, I think we've all said several times what an amazing group of candidates we had today, especially considering the short length of time that they will be serving. And just to know that um, Ms. Kukler, you have our uh, Multnomah County's support behind you 100% and anything that we can do to help um, ensure your success during these next few months, we're here for, to stand with you. I'm sure I would you also are. like thank you, uh, Ms. Cook. I would also like to say I could have gone either way yeah. on my votes mm -hmm. on this. Um, I just think it's you know it's an honor and a privilege to serve in the Oregon Legislature, and I consider the candidates put forward for this nomination were all outstanding individuals. I do really appreciate that. Any other comments for commissioners, Commissioner Stoll? Yes, I would like to congratulate Lori and thank Kristen and Nick for their service. And I look forward to working with them also at some time in the future. And I want to thank everybody here this evening for their outstanding and nonpartisan approach to this. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Commissioner Oates. Yeah, I just want to echo that and thank everyone for being involved and being so professional, including the three candidates that were tremendous. Thank you for the process. Thank you, Tootie, for running this. It's nice okay. not to have to do that. <laughs> yeah, I have to kind of, I have to pay attention. That's one of those things about being a chair, right? Well, on behalf of the Clackamas County Board of Commissioners, the Hood River County Board of Commissioners and the Multnomah County Board of Commissioners, I would like to congratulate Lori Kukler on their appointment to the Oregon House of Representatives. As a former member of the Oregon House of Representatives, myself uh, and Commissioner Kafori, Commissioner Schrader has served as the center. I want you to know this is a very high honor and privilege not to be squandered. And to I know you will do a very good job. You have a lot of experience behind you. I look forward to your continued advocacy. I would like to say to Dr. Um, um, Hello. Yeah, to the other two candidates, please continue your advocacy and continue, if you want to be involved in politics, continue to uh, be a part of the process and help um, uh, Ms. Kukler in her quest to represent in a very 
short, short amount of time. I think it's maybe a little bit longer than three months. Um, but we can, in Clackamas County, we need to continue the funding for our courthouse. It's coming in over budget. Um, I just want to thank you all. Um, Ms. Kukler, do you have anything you'd like to say? Um, actually, I'm a little overwhelmed, I must say, but I am incredibly grateful to all of the commissioners. I do appreciate uh, all of the votes and the rationale behind every vote. I understand the interests of Hood River and the, the, the preference for Dr. Dillon. That makes a tremendous amount of sense to me. And I, uh, I accept that. I will be traveling frequently and I will be up and, and I hope that um, Anna Williams will, con will continue her communications and to help create continuity in that way for someone that wasn't necessarily uh, her endorsement. And I'm sure she will. Again, I truly appreciate the, the congeniality of this gathering. I'm just so inspired and I hope that I can reflect it as I serve. Uh, thank you, Ms. Kugler. <clears throat> In conclusion, I would like to thank all those residents of Clackamas, Hood River, and Multnomah counties for watching over Zoom. It is only through resident and stakeholder involvement that we can collectively work the best to represent you. With that in mind, this meeting is adjourned, and thank you all. Thank Goodbye. you. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everyone.